Good morning. Just uh, it's good to be with all of you as well. Look forward to the uh, start of the 2019 season. I just want to start out by taking a moment to recognize uh, just a tremendous career uh, that Jim Delaney's enjoyed. Uh, you know, I first came to these meetings 20 plus years ago, and it was really quick to see, um, you know, the kind of leadership and the vision that Jim possessed back then, and uh, his impact on our conference, uh, let alone college football and college athletics, has just been, I think, tremendously positive and tremendously uh, dynamic and uh, uh, very, very important. So, just want to congratulate Jim on the fine work that he's done for the conference and all the leadership that he's provided. And wish him uh, obviously all the best moving forward. Uh, someone earlier this week told me the first time I came to these meetings, uh, Sammy Sosa was playing right, right field for the uh, Cubs, and, and uh, there were 11 teams back then. So it just kind of highlights uh, the kind of change, I think, that we've all seen uh, in the world over the last couple of decades. And, uh, you know, that, that really hasn't changed. Uh, I jumped on a bike earlier this week in our facility. We've got a new bike, exercise bike, and uh, it took me about 15 minutes to figure out all the bells and whistles that are on it. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is, you know, all kinds of gadgets on there. I'm sure I don't understand 10% of it. Uh, but the bottom line is you still got to pedal the bike. And that's kind of, I think, uh, reflective of college football also, the, the way things have changed over the last couple of decades, whether it's our training, uh, the way we practice, certainly recruiting has changed uh, a huge amount. Uh, you think about the media coverage now and interest uh, as compared to 20 years ago, not only in football, but the recruiting. So a lot of things in our lives have changed a great deal. Uh, and, and beyond that, I uh, think about the Big Ten Network uh, 10 years ago. Uh, a lot of people were very skeptical about that, and, and look what that's uh, growing into. So the world certainly changed, but I think the bottom line is the goals for most of us uh, remain pretty much the same. And that gets down to trying to field a championship-level football team uh, year in and year out, trying to get uh, athletes to do a good job uh, of going to class, doing quality work, and earning their good degrees. And then uh, probably most importantly is just be good, contributing, positive citizens in their community. And uh, those things really haven't changed. So just like, you know, riding a bike, you got to pedal it. you got to put energy into it. Uh, the basics, the fundamentals that it takes to be successful in anything, I don't think have changed in, in, uh, in any amount of time. So that, that part's remained consistent. And as it pertains to our athletes, really, you know, when they learn those fundamentals and they learn how to do things on a consistent basis with some discipline, uh, those things will serve them really well for their life after football, which every one of our players faces that reality at some point. So, you know, the bottom line is uh, what we're doing really hasn't changed an awful lot. The world around us has changed, but the fundamentals, I think, really remain the same. You know, we, we had a really good football team. It was a fun team to be with last year, a fun, fun team to be with on a daily basis and work with. Uh, but with uh, at the end of every season, you lose good players, that's for sure. And if you have a good football team, you're going to lose good players. So we face that uh, like anybody in the country. And, uh, you know, start of January, we had a new, a new year, new calendar year, and certainly a new football team. And then that team is continually changing. We had our freshmen a couple months ago. They came in June. So it's an ongoing process. But uh, just really happy with uh, this team so far. Uh, they've worked hard. We've got a bunch of quality players on our team, uh, the three players that are here uh, for, for this day event uh, are representative, I think, of the kind of guys that we have on our football team. And that uh, certainly gets us excited. But all that being said, we also realize we've got a lot of work in front of us. I think the team has improved with every phase. Uh, the most important thing for us right now is to finish up uh, the summer uh, uh, phase of our program, take a good break, and then uh, you know we'll hit the field here uh, when the next month comes around. And we're all certainly looking forward to that. So that being said, I'll, uh, I'll throw it out for any questions. If you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand. And again, stand up, state your name and affiliation. We'll start in the back on the far right. Jason Jorgensen, KRVN Radio. Coach, you lost some really good pieces, but you bring some good guys back. What what excites you the most about this uh, season? What's all going to come together to make it work for you guys? You know, I think so far just uh, the attitude that we've seen uh, as coaches, you know, watching the guys work, it's uh, been very positive. Uh, I think the attitude has is, is, uh, been consistent since, uh, you know, January when things got started. And uh, more importantly, maybe the leadership uh, base has grown. So I think uh, we see a lot of guys taking ownership right now. Uh, I think they're excited about uh, trying to be become a good football team. And, uh, you know, we have a, uh, like I mentioned, lost a lot of really good players, but I think we have some really good players coming back, and they'll kind of be the uh, guys that have to, you know, lead the way a little bit for us. And hopefully uh, when September rolls around late August, we'll be ready to play competitive football.
Morning, Kirk. Chad Lestico, Des Moines Register. Uh, you mentioned uh, it comes down to fielding a championship level football team. How far away do you think you are from uh, winning that Big Ten championship? Well, we'll find out. We, we have a chance to have an opportunity, and uh, you know, it's the first thing you have to do is put yourself in position uh, to be competitive. And uh, you know, then once you get to that spot, um, then, then it's a matter of just handling all the little things well. And uh, you know, last year we. I thought we played good football. Uh, all of our four losses, uh, you know, I, I can do math. They didn't come down to one possession, but if you were at the games, they were basically one possession ball games. And uh, that's, that's really the difference between, you know, uh, being at the top, being, you know, near the top or being in the middle or being at the bottom, you know, how you handle those little things. So uh, for us, historically, we have to be able to win close games. Uh, and then I think bigger and more importantly, the bigger picture, you know, we have to be really be improvement driven. I mean, we better be getting better. Uh, and that's true any day of the week that's true any month of the year if we're not moving forward uh, we're gonna have a hard time you know being successful so you know if our players understand that and we do a good job as coaches we understand that then at least we give ourselves a chance to to maybe be uh, competitive when it all counts hi Kirk Scott Docterman with the athletic you had to replace two first round draft picks at tight end um, they're tough to replace obviously uh, who, who's going to step up for you in that position, and how far of a drop off do you think there will be between those two? And yeah, I mean, you know, we've had some really good players uh, in our program. You go back to, you know, name anybody. Uh, you know, Banks take uh, off the O2 team. Banks and Clark, two pretty good players, uh, and I think that's probably a good good place to start because Brad Banks, August two, 2002 or July, whenever it was, we had these meetings then. Um, yeah, nobody even knew who the guy was. He hadn't started a game in major college football. Ends up being the uh, runner-up to the Heisman, AP Player of the Year, Big Ten Player of the Year. So, uh, you know, you just never know how guys are going to emerge, how they're going to develop, and how they're going to play and compete on the field when they get an opportunity. Uh, and on that team, guy like Bob Sanders, Dallas Clark, two other guys, Robert Gallery, those guys graduated the next year, Kading. Uh, to answer the question, you, you, you don't replace guys like that. They're, they're um, you know, legendary players, if you will, for a reason. Uh, they just end up you know, climbing the ladder, what have you. And I think anytime you talk about losing a first round player, uh, that, that's a pretty special accomplishment. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to go with uh, the guys that we have on the roster. And I think if you look at guys like Nate Waiting, who's had some injury issues, I think he's a really good football player. And I think he's just uh, waiting for his opportunities, practiced well, trained well. Uh, I'm very confident he'll play very well for us. And Sean Byers, a guy who hasn't just kind of put it all together yet, but he's got the potential to do that. And this would be a great time for him to take a big step forward. And uh, Drew Cook was out this past spring, but you know we think Drew can help us at that position as well. All that being said, uh, we're not as we won't be even if those guys play well, we won't be as deep as we were a year ago. So you know it'll change things uh, a little bit in terms of our formula of you know guys on the field. But that's just football. You try to kind of adjust every year to, to where your strengths are and uh, try to feature the guys that you, you know can do a good job for you. Are there any further questions for Coach Ferentz? One in the far back by the cameras. Coach Ross Jernstrom, WWT, NBC Omaha. Uh, talk about Nate Stanley and the progression he has made at quarterback over the last few years. Yeah, and you, just asked, you asked that question, I think, about the first time we brought Nate in. Uh, um, I think it was like a third and one, third and two, or something like that. I don't know. Uh, maybe third and four. I don't know. It's a third down situation. Against North Dakota State, his true freshman year, uh, something happened to CJ. CJ came out, and uh, Nate, Nate fired a strike his first play. So, you know, he was a young kid at that time. He was ready to go, and, and we weren't afraid to let him go. Um, and, uh, you know, I think he's just done a really good job for us. He's a tremendous young man, first and foremost. Uh, very serious, very conscientious, extremely hardworking, and uh, very team-oriented. So, you know, he, he's done a good job for two seasons for us. Uh, you hope all of your players are improving, and uh, I think it's really critical on any football team. If your best guys aren't improving and they're not playing their best, you're not going to have a good football team. And uh, Nate, you know, embraces that you know he can't wait to uh, play this year I'm sure and uh, I think one nice thing about experience you can't hand it to anybody he's he's been out on the field in tough circumstances so I think all those things will benefit him and I'm sure he'll put those to good use this this fall
coach Adam Kruger from CBS Omaha. With the uh, good games you've had with Nebraska in the past and the perception that their program is on the rise, do you notice from your fan base or your players that there's a little more fieriness towards them in the last couple of years? Well, you know, I, my history with them goes back to 1981. Uh, my first game as an assistant at Iowa was against them. And uh, they'd beaten us, you know, by a lot the year before. We upset them in 81. They uh, paid, paid, paid us back the next year pretty handily over in uh, Lincoln. So, you know, back then it really wasn't a series. Uh, we played them tough and beat them one time back in the 80s. Uh, coincidentally, when I get back to Iowa in 99, my first game against uh, as a head coach was against Nebraska. And, it was competitive for about 10 minutes. So, uh, you know, it just uh, – and we had a two-game series there, and, and we didn't come close in either one. So, you know, at least it's uh, to the point now where it's a series, and I think uh, both teams enjoy the matchup. It's a trophy game, uh, and I think one of the neater trophies in, um, in college football, sponsored by Ivy. It's uh, just, you know, the Heroes Trophy, which uh, recognizes people uh, in both states that have just done some really amazing things. So I think that's just a really nice – uh, you know, caveat to the whole thing, but it's uh, it's been a good good series, and you know they've they've uh, done a tremendous job in a short amount of time, and you know they're going to be a really tough team. I know that. Any further questions? Trent Con and KX and O, Coach, uh, you've seen a lot of changes during your 21 years at Iowa. If I gave you a magic wand, what change would you make today? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Uh, my first thought would be recruiting. You know, and, and uh, you know, there, there's there. I have no no uh, positive suggestions to make. I mean, there are a lot of little tweaks I think that we need to make and could make real quickly, uh, but it wouldn't it wouldn't address the uh, I think the number one problem. Just the speed of recruiting right now to me is really concerning. Uh, you know, in a logical world, you would wait for everybody to finish their careers evaluate them and then then go about the recruiting process kind of like the NFL does it and uh, you know they still make a lot of mistakes I heard Bill Pullian on the radio this past year talking about uh, they always you know their study was somewhere roughly around 50 percent of the first rounders hit it think about the time and money they invest to uh, evaluate those players college players and uh, you know just how, how thorough and in-depth that is and and we're you know we're we're recruiting tenth graders you know we'll have guys going into their junior year on our campus uh, here at the end of the month we'll be hosting them for a junior day so you know if you think about it from a logical standpoint you really can't make it make sense but you know that's the world we're living in so you just adjust and adopt to it but that uh, that being said I think there are some things that we can do to make it a little bit more logical and a little bit more sane and I think we've taken some of those steps we just have a, a lot of territory to cover still so. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a challenge moving forward for sure. Final question on the far left. Dustin Schutte, Saturday Tradition. Uh, one of the big changes is now the transfer portal. I know you guys have added some big wide receivers uh, in the off offseason uh, th that way. What's your approach to adding guys through the transfer portal? Yeah, so I'm only chuckling because that ties in with that last question. I guess I forgot that part. Um, just, you know, some clarity on that whole thing would really help too. I, I understand how the portal works. That's pretty clear, pretty decisive. Uh, what is confusing is, you know, who, who gets a pass to the field and who doesn't. And that, that didn't just start this past 12 months either. So uh, it's been a little confusing to figure out who can get a, uh, a waiver and who can't. What, what are the actual criteria? Uh, you know, I'd like to see that get cleaned up a little bit. Uh, we haven't been really active in it a whole lot. You know, you mentioned we have a couple guys that have transferred that are, transferred, uh, that are non-scholarship players. I don't think there were scholarship players at their given institutions, and I expect them not to be ready uh, this year. I imagine they'll have to redshirt, and that's uh, my understanding at least. So, you know, we're, we're not counting on that to um, build our team or really even supplement our team. And uh, conversely, if you know, we've had players, I think we've had four quarterbacks leave our program uh, as grad transfers and uh, go on to other schools and done very, very well not only for themselves, but they've led their teams uh, in, a, in a really stellar way. And I understand that a little bit better because there's only one seat when it comes to a quarterback typically. So I, I get that part a little bit. And it's, I think that was a good thing for the four individuals. And ultimately, it's kind of like everything we do in college football. It should be about what's best for the players. Uh, and I think in all four of those cases, it worked out. So I'm perfectly happy and comfortable with that. Uh, but going back to the original question, I just think we could use a little bit more clarity in terms of what happens when um, you know, once a player decides to leave a school, you know, what are, what are the actual ABCs of the whole thing? So, 
Okay. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.